played by Smyslov in the same tournament I was playing in 1971 in the USSR Championship in Leningrad, St. Petersburg today, against none other than Anatoly Karpov. Karpov was already a very strong player there and was, was one of the candidates to win this USSR championship. And let's see the game. Smyslov then was already 50 years old, wasn't a very young man. And the reason I'm showing you this game, you, he played this game with a youthful energy, knight c3, <coughs> d5, cd, knight takes d5, e3, e6, d4, cd, ed. What we get here is a pan of attack from Karokan, bishop e7, bishop d3, castling both sides, knight c6, rook e1, and knight f6. Knight f6 move was my favorite move. I used to play this position many times, and I played knight f6. And Karpov played knight f6 as well. But however, knight f6 is not the best move. The best move is bishop f6. And knight f6 played very seldom today. Later, I put a lot of analysis in uh, this position and came to conclusion the position is simply not good for black. Bishop c2. Actually, a3 was played first. A3 is a very strong move, not allowing black knight to go to b4. For example, on bishop c2, knight b4, a knight would go to d5. That's a good outpost for the knight. So a3 move stops it. b6, bishop c2, and bishop b7. Well, bishop a6 is a better move, also known theoretically to prevent queen d3. Bishop b7, queen d3, and this is the position on which I spend countless hours analyzing. Rook c8 was played by Karpov and bishop g5. Rook c8, a big mistake, and so is bishop g5. In this position, white has absolutely forced win. And it's very hard to find it on the board unless you analyzed it beforehand. The win is d5. Actually, this is something uh, you should know for future, in the future. So d5 is nearly winning move. Now, if knight a5, simply d takes e, or maybe even bishop g5. Black's position is absolutely terrible. Knight cannot move from f6 because of the checkmate on h7, and we don't want to go much deeper, but position is terrible. And if e takes d, then the forced win is bishop g5. Now, threatening simply to take on f6 and take on h7 with a checkmate. So, Smyslov played bishop g5, but correct move was first d5 on ed bishop g5, and black has no defense. I will quickly enlighten you what is going on here. G6 
loses instantly to rook takes e7, and on queen takes e7, knight takes d5. Black suffers huge material losses. g6 is out of question, so knight e4 must be played, and forcefully we're going to end up with uh, extra pawn in the end game for white with a big positional advantage. And every move here is forced. Let's see what can happen. Knight takes e4, pawn takes, queen takes e4, attacking checkmate on h7, and attacking bishop on e7. It looks like white wins a piece, but they don't. g6, bishop takes e7, queen must take on e7, queen takes e7, knight takes e7, and the rook takes e7. Now, in order to take bishop on c2, black has to save the bishop on b7, black must play bishop takes f3, and now bishop b3, now this bishop on f3 has to go back to a8, rook takes a7, and this position is absolutely hopeless for black, because <clears throat> White has an extra pawn, there is terrible weakness on f7 that ties black's rook to f7 pawn, and there is a big weakness on b6 for black. And eventually, white rook is going to go to d1 and d7, or e1, e7, after h3 or f3 move. So, black, this could have happened. By playing d5, Smyslov could have gotten this position. But, as again, this was not known then, and uh, that's why he played here bishop g5. After bishop g5, white is still better. g6, rook a d1, <coughs> knight d5, and of course here would be bad mistake for white to exchange bishops, because this is typical position where white has a weak pawn on d4, and <clears throat> they have to keep two, they shouldn't exchange any pieces, because they have space advantage. And as a rule, when you have space advantage, you try to keep as many pieces on board as possible, because it's difficult for your opponent to maneuver their pieces on very limited space. Bishop h6, rook e8, bishop a4, now the pin comes from the other side of the board and a6 was played. Now, probably the best try would have been knight takes c3, and if b takes c, bishop takes a3. Although, I think that after c4, with the potential of d5, white has great compensation. If I was black, I would have been scared taking pawn like this. The Karpov played a6, it's his academic style, he wants to break the pin. Knight takes d5, queen takes d5, and now simply queen e3. And after bishop f6, bishop b3. Black is already almost lost. The best move would have been queen d7 here. But then after d5, e takes d and queen takes b6. It's very difficult position for black. Their pieces are not placed well. 
pawn on d5 is very weak, but this would have been a lot better option than queen h5, which lost practically in a very few moves. d5, of course, pawn cannot be taken because it's a forced mate after queen takes e8. Knight d8 was played by black. Now d6, rook c5, now threatening d7 fork, of course. Rook c5, d7, rook e7, and now killing move, queen f4, attacking f6 bishop and preparing queen to b8. Bishop g7, queen to b8, queen takes h6, queen takes d8, and game ended right here. Rook e3 was played, and after bishop c6, simpl simplifying position and going to the end game with an extra piece. Carpo resigned here. It's quite powerful game for not such a young uh, player. It was in USSR Championship, and I witnessed, <clears throat> I was standing and watching this game the way it was developing. Very powerful game. So Smyslov died last year at the age of 89, and he is dearly missed by everyone who knew him. And to me, he was like a father figure. He, was, he gave me a lot of advices in chess, in general approach to a chess, and was a very smart and very colorful personality. And I will miss him very, very much. Thank you very much for listening to the lecture, and I hope to see you very soon with more of the world's greatest